it's that time of year again, and you need to clear the white stuff from your driveway, sidewalks, and patios. The biggest issue is it is a big physical workout for your entire body, like cross training that involves cardio and strength. And many people are not prepared for it, as seen by the number of heart attacks and injuries during the shoveling season. We find the highest number of referrals for back pain occur two weeks after gardening starts and after the first snowfall. This video will be focusing on suggestions to make the task safer for your back and hopefully prevent an injury. Hello, my name is Jean Cable. I'm a physical therapist with Door County Medical Center and I'm here to demonstrate a few techniques and suggestions for safe shoveling. Most folks have their favorite shovel. We get a lot of questions in the department about why people would use an ergonomic shovel. The difference is it just brings your arm closer to the load of the snow. So for example, when I'm doing a shovel like this, I really need to get within 10 inches of the front of the shovel so that the weight of the snow is going through my legs, not my back, way up here. This shovel just allows you not to have to bend over quite so much for that. So number one, pick your best shovel. I'm picking my best shovel, which is my ergonomic one. The second thing is you wanna do a warm up. This is an incredibly physical activity. It's a heart attack producer and a back injury producer. In the clinic, the highest number of rehab referrals we have are first the first weeks after gardening and after the first snowfall. So by doing a warm up before you start the shoveling, you're gonna be more likely to prevent an injury. And just like the research shows for sports, you wanna do the same thing. Do a little bit of a lighter version of the activity you're about to do. So in a baseball player, he might swing the bat. Tennis player might do a little bit of volleying. This is the same thing. Take just three to five minutes and do smaller versions of the activity. Once you've done three to five minutes and the blood flow is going to your legs and your back, then you can start the heavier, the heavier shoveling. Third thing is you wanna think about your posture when we're doing this. And you're gonna go back to the exact same sports analogies that we did before. Think to yourself, alignment a baseball outfielder waiting for a tennis serve. So your butt is out, your spine is straight, your legs are bent. This allows you to get the snow, straighten up, pivot to where you need to put it, and go. That hip hinge versus waist hinge is what protects your back. There's a term called cashew posture and it's when your back looks like a cashew. <laughs> and if you go down the streets of Sturgeon Bay, you might see a lot of this. And that's where we get a lot of our referrals. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the technique. So think of four things when you're doing this. Number one, keep your arms close. So again, the biggest problem is when we tend to use our arms to do the tossing. This puts tremendous pressure on our mid-back and our low back. Instead, think T-Rex arms and put one foot in the direction you are tossing the snow. So step in to the position you're tossing the snow. So if I'm doing a sidewalk, the tendency is to want to pivot like this, but you can see where I'm really twisting my back. Instead, if I pivot one foot in the direction I'm moving the snow, it prevents that twisting. And the last point is pace yourself. Just like the gym, on the first day out, you wouldn't go for a two and a half, three hour workout and not think you're gonna be sore the next day. So what you wanna, what you, what you wanna think of is you wanna do small bouts of shoveling. So I'll say 15 to 20 minutes, then maybe take a little bit of a break come back out and finish her up. The other thing is you could, in a big snowstorm like we just had, shovel multiple times per day so that you don't have to go out and do one big shovel at the end. 
take smaller shovel fulls. If you can push the snow for part of it, do it. And of course, if you have a snow blower, go for it. But the same principles apply. You want to keep the blower close. You want to use your legs to drive it, not your back to drive it. So take smaller shovel fulls. Interrupt your postures, and a good stretch to do for an interruption is clasping your hands behind your back and gently rolling your shoulders and putting your hands down. So I'll try that again. Gently rolling your shoulders back and hands down your back. If it bothers your shoulder, just put your hands on your seat and roll your shoulders back. That takes you out of the forward bent position, rounded position, into a more open position. And it's a great stretch to interrupt these stressful activities. Even with the above modifications, you may feel sore in the next 12 to 24 hours, usually peaking at 48 hours. Ice the back for short periods, 15 to 20 minutes, for sharp burning or radiating pain. Heat can be used on low if you're feeling more of a stiffness versus pain. This new onset of pain usually means inflammation, and that is usually best dealt with using cold. If you are able to use over-the-counter pain medications, this can help. Ask your primary care physician if you have questions. And keep relatively active. Don't sit for hours on end after shoveling, as you will get stiff. Keep her moving. And lastly, if you sustain an injury and you have to come to therapy, we are here to help you recover and hopefully prevent future injuries. Thank you for watching and be careful out there.